Hi everybody, this video is going to cover some of the differences in editing tests and test settings for Canvas versus Blackboard. Now because our focus is going to be on Blackboard because that's a more popular LMS and because that's the LMS that we're using in class, I think it'll be more valuable to focus more on Blackboard. But just so you can kind of see the differences that are out there, we're going to cover Canvas as well. So. This is a Canvas course and I'm just going to go into a sample quiz that I've made here and we can edit the quiz. It's a simple edit button so you'll notice right off the bat we didn't have to go into the test pools quizzes area like we did in Blackboard to access the test to edit it. We just simply click on the test and then we can click on the edit button. Sorry about that, there was actually a problem with that quiz, so I moved on to a different quiz. Same situation, we can click edit to edit the quiz, and as you can see here, you have the settings and the questions. So it's a little more convenient from an instructor's perspective to be able to edit the settings and the questions in the same area, and you don't have to navigate to um, your deployment area versus your testing area like you do in Blackboard. Um, we have a quiz type. We have practice quiz, graded quiz, graded survey, and ungraded survey. If you've worked with, after you've worked with Blackboard a little bit, you'll realize these kind of, mm, these might be nice to have, but they're really, they don't add a lot of additional functionality. Uh, assignment group, that's going to be similar to um, your categories in Blackboard. So it will help with weighted grades and different um, groupings of different assignments throughout the semester and that sort of thing. So um, those function fairly similarly. Shuffle answers is the same as randomized questions in Blackboard. So the terminology is a big difference here between Canvas and Blackboard. The terminology is the big deal. And they're really more plain English in Canvas. So shuffle answers, that's not ambiguous. Randomized questions, a little, a little less clear for new users. Time limit versus timer, set your minutes here, allow multiple attempts, keep the highest score. Again, in Blackboard you have to set that in a different area, so there's a lot more navigation. So everything is sort of easier to access in Canvas and all sort of on one screen. You can set the number of attempts allowed. Uh, so in Blackboard you have a specific number or a single attempt or unlimited attempts. This area I really like in Canvas versus Blackboard because in Blackboard it's simple one word options for feedback and it's a little confusing to a lot of instructors and they generally tend to leave things blank thinking they don't want students to have access to the answers because they don't want them to cheat which is a different subject about unreasonable paranoia but to stay on topic um, it's much plainer here this lets students see their answers to quiz responses this um, allows only once after each attempt that means the students can only see it one time or they can see all the correct answers if you don't have this checked they'll be able to see their their answers every time. This lets them see the correct answers. And it's really, in Blackboard, it just says correct answers. So you can reasonably make that leap to it means it's going to let students see the correct answers. But just having those additional words on the screen from a new user perspective is very, very helpful. And instructors don't get as confused when they're setting their test options when they see all of those words there as unnecessary as they might seem. This is an option that's not directly available in Blackboard because you can go into Blackboard and select the show correct answers option at any time. So say after uh, a test due date and everyone's taking the test, you can go back and, and set it to show the correct answers after that point, which a lot of instructors like to do. But this just gives an, it just makes it automatic. So you don't have to remember as the instructor, oh, I need to go back and turn that on. And then you can hide the answers again. So if you want students to only be able to go in and, and you want them to know what the correct answers were 
for a short amount of time, but then you want those correct answers to go away again so that they can't see their, um, they can't see the correct answer to the test, they can't find the answer key. You can set that there, and that's an option, again, that's just manual in Blackboard, and here it, it's automatic. Show one question at a time, similar in Blackboard. Um, lock questions after answering functions the same as the no backtracking option. Now in Canvas, and it's been a while since I've checked this, but the student experience when they're taking the test and this option is selected, they can still go back and look at the other questions and their answer choices, but they can't change them. Now in Blackboard, if students try to go back, and they will, despite numerous warnings that they shouldn't, they'll get a, a 404 or a page not found error and they'll panic and then they call support and it's a whole big ordeal. But in Canvas, at least it doesn't lock them up or knock them out of the test, uh, but it doesn't allow them to change their answers after they've made their selections when you uh, choose to show questions one at a time. And without that, you obviously have the all at once presentation mode where in Blackboard, it lists both of those options and you have to select from them. So here, it's sort of, giving you only the additional options that you're not going to have that you could select. So it doesn't display the defaults, which mm, I don't know if, if I really like that or not. It's less on the screen, but it doesn't really tell them what's going to happen if they don't check those boxes. Access code required um, in Blackboard, it's um, password, which I think password is more clear, but the thing that I really do like about this is in Blackboard it has the box and the check mark available and you can ch you can enter a password without checking the box and it's not going to work if you don't have the box checked so here that just prevents that from happening you can't enter a password without checking the box so it just kind of user proofs it a little bit more uh, filtering an IP address is something that would be really hard to imagine needing I mean that is super duper specific, but if it comes up, you do have that availability. Now, this um, option selects the courses. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is in Canvas, and this is not isolated to a testing option, but in Canvas, a lot of materials um, can share between courses and for an instructor teaching a lot of courses that can be really handy but it for support it's a little it's one more thing to check to see if instructors actually put things where they needed to be and made them uh, set them the way that they needed to be set so there's pros and cons to that one too now the due dates obvious it's a due date the test availability is the same here as it is in Blackboard. Again, similar to the password, in Blackboard you have to set the date and check the boxes. And a lot of times instructors will set the date and not check the boxes and the dates reset afterwards and they're not applicable. So I really like that this is just a date box and when you select the date, that is the date. And you do have the same time settings available there as well. So those are some of the primary differences between test options uh, in Canvas and in Blackboard and just like I said in the Blackboard test settings video thoughtfully thoughtfully consider the settings and just consider how that's going to change the student experience when you're making those decisions.